The reason they were starving was that people were making sure that the money that was intended for the poor was lining somebody else's pockets. It started in the Philippines. I am grossly disappointed. He says the LTFRB, SSS, BIR, LRA, and Pag-ibig need to drastically improve their services. I've been asking that from you since three years ago. Pag hindi pa din yung nagawa yan ngayon, papatayin ko talaga kayo. So I'm sitting here tonight with Karen Nudis. Karen, you went to Yale Law School. You were the senior counsel for 21 years for the World Bank. Can you tell me why? What prompted you to become the whistleblower? It was the right thing to do. I had to do it. That was my job. My job was to make sure that people played by the rules. It was a bank and you don't play around when you're working at a bank. You follow the rules. So what happened at the World Bank? When you became the whistleblower, you jeopardized everything that you worked for. Can you tell me what you saw? What happened that made you give up that 21 years that you worked for? I saw corruption. I saw that poor people weren't getting what was coming to them. They were starving. And the reason they were starving was that people we're making sure that the money that was intended for the poor was lining somebody else's pockets. It started in the Philippines with the president of the Philippines who was impeached and he had to give back the millions of dollars that he stole. And when I saw that happening and when the, the Supreme Court Chief Justice in the Philippines saw that happening, we were making sure that that wasn't going to continue. But that wasn't, that wasn't what people who were in management at the World Bank wanted. What they wanted was to keep the money flowing in the wrong direction. So who did you go to? Who did you reach out to? I did my job. I went to the people inside the World Bank and I ultimately went to the audit committee of the World Bank and I told them that we were failing in our job, which was to help the poor in the Philippines. And we were failing the government in the Philippines who was trying to do the right thing. So what was their response? Their response was to cover everything up that needed to be disclosed. So at that point, did you decide to go beyond the World Bank, beyond the people that you were working with? Did you, did you reach out to the community that you were dealing with? I followed the rules of professional responsibility for the legal profession. And I did what the Senate and the House of Representatives required at the World Bank. What they required was that any lawyer or accountant that saw that money was going in the wrong direction was supposed to disclose that up the corporate ladder, which is what I did. I went to the audit committee. It was only when, when people didn't do their job that I did what the requirement for lawyers is. And that is, I ultimately went to the US Congress and I told them that there was corruption and that the lawyers were being prevented from doing their job. At what point, because we know that you were let go, at what point did you feel your job was in jeopardy? It was always in jeopardy, but that wasn't, that wasn't going to prevent me from doing what I had to do because I was trained to do my job. And my job was simply to make sure that the information that the board needed so that they could do their job went to the board. A cover-up in a bank is a terrible thing because money gets spent where it's not supposed to go. Now we were told that an outside accounting firm was hired to come in and look at the books. What happened with that? Yes, I spoke to the audit committee and I told them that they needed to get an outside audit firm to come in. And what happened 
was the audit firm didn't follow the rules. There's something called the uh, Public Company Accounting Oversight Board that put out rules for the accounting profession. And what ultimately happened was the man who was the controller at the World Bank put me in touch with the umbrella organization for accountants. That's the EFAC, International Federation of Accounting. And I told them everything that I told the U.S. Congress. For the average person who's watching this right now, who may not totally comprehend the magnitude of the World Bank, can you tell me who was suffering with this corruption? Everybody in the whole world, because the World Bank is an international cooperative that's owned by 187 countries, including the U.S. The U.S. has a 20% share. And when there's a breakdown in the rules at the World Bank, what this basically means is that the entire financial system is broken. And one of the, one of the terrible things is that it's not just the poor people, but it's also the securities markets in the whole world, because the World Bank issues bonds, $110 billion worth of bonds. 70% of those bonds are in dollars, and the rest are in all the currencies of the world. And when the accountants aren't keeping the books straight at the World Bank, you, you don't have confidence in the international monetary system. So you have to fix the problem, and I knew that if I let this problem go, there was going to be a currency war. I couldn't let it go. I was obligated. And the man who helped write the rules at the World Bank, the treaty, because 187 countries have passed their own legislation to belong to the World Bank. And he basically told me, he was the longest serving general counsel for 20 years, he gave me the operation manual and he said, he said that I couldn't let the world down. I had to do my job because if I walked away from that problem, we were going to have we were going to have situations like Bernie Madoff in every single country in the world, and I couldn't let that happen. You also had told me that it would jeopardize our standing within the world, um, in as far as well, we, aren't we the ones who actually elect or help pick? who's going to head the World Bank, and by not doing something about this, we were losing our credibility? That's right. The, the World Bank was created in 1944 together with the International Monetary Fund. And for 66 years, everyone let the United States pick the president of the World Bank. But after we stopped playing by the rules, they said no. We, we're not going to follow the gentleman's agreement anymore. The U.S. lost its credibility. Now, Karen, uh, you've told me that you, and you've shown to me, that you have documentation that has not been shown yet. I know you've spent hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawsuits that you have personally filed. Um, just recently, you've had a breakthrough with Congress. Can you tell me something about that? Yes. Well, basically, it wasn't me who had the breakthrough. What I simply did was I told Congress what had to happen, and Congress asked the U.S. Government Accountability Office to do a study of the World Bank. And the World Bank refused. Three senators, Senator Luger, Leahy, and Bai, asked for the U.S. GAO to find out what was going on. And the World Bank refused to answer the questions. Can you imagine? That's contempt of Congress. Wow. You, can't, you can't let that happen. And, and so when it, the World Bank asked Congress for money, guess what Congress said? They said no. They said, we're not going to give you a blank check. We have to make sure that the money is spent the right way. And if you're not going to answer the questions of the US GAO, we, we would be remiss if we appropriated that money. That happened on the 9th of March. That was the House Appropriations Committee. 
So for all the people that are watching this video right now, what would you like them to do? I would like them to do their jobs as citizens and hold their government accountable and make sure that they thank the Appropriations Committee for making sure that the GAO studies completed. And I would, I would like to make sure that they hold their Congress people accountable, their senators and their representatives in the House. I'd also like them to learn what they need to know about the international monetary system because they can't just um, leave it up to lawyers like me. They need to protect me. They, they need to get me back at the World Bank. So bottom line here, if we do nothing about this, what's the end result? The end result is that people won't know whether, whether the dollar is going to stay the international currency. Because if the U.S. can't be counted on to play by the rules, why should they hold dollars? Why shouldn't their uh, ministers of finance hold a different currency? And if the dollar loses its status as the international currency, this country is going to be in a very difficult, tight spot.